The main finding of the paper shows that when people are scared, they sell their stocks earlier on. We show that the mechanism through which this happened is social projection, which is basically says that uh, whatever I'm feeling, I tend to believe that you are feeling something similar. So if I'm scared, I tend to project that you are scared. So if I feel like selling, I also tend to project that you are going to sell. And because I know that the, the stock price or the stock value is going to vary depending on both of our decisions, then I sell it earlier because I believe that the price is going to drop. The important thing is that it, this happens, but not always. And when does this not happen? It depends on how, you, how people believe that the value of the stock is computed. If I tell, if I, when, I told, when we told people that the value of the stock was being randomly generated by the computer, we observed no impact of fear. When you told them that the value of the stock was being generated by everybody's decision in the room, then we observed a, a, a quite strong impact. And that's where this notion of social projection comes in. So we wanted to manipulate their emotions or in a completely incidental manner, something that would not be related at all to the stock market simulation that they would play later on. And uh, we know from a lot of research that, that, that I have conducted and others have conducted that it's very easy to just change people's feelings for a little while by having them watching movies. We created two groups. We randomly assigned people to, two, to either the documentary group or the horror movie group. So what we observed is that those who had watched the horror movies sold their stock early on relative to those who had watched the documentaries. So the idea here actually was to, uh, first of all, have several different clips to make sure that this effect was not driven just by one particular clip. So we just try to find, try to find horror movies that are popular and that these kids would like to enjoy. The documentaries are just basically very plain, non-emotional. They see two horror movies, they choose which one they want. In, in one of the experiments, for instance, they watch Six Sense and The Ring, two clips about five, uh, five six minutes each. They chose which one they, they like the most or that they dislike the least. And in the documentary condition, what they watch, they watch the scene, uh, scenes of uh, one documentary about um, Benjamin Franklin and the other one about Van Gogh. And then and they chose which one they liked the most. And then this study was done. Then let's go to the next study, and that's a stock market simulation. They don't realize that they are scared because of the horror movie. They now think that they are scared because the price is going down. So this is basically the stock value. So people start with 10. They convert, so this is their participation fee that's it's converted into a stock. And then in each round, they have the opportunity to sell or to keep. Now, if there are a lot of people selling, then the price goes down. If no one is selling, the price goes up. So what shows here is that a lot of people are selling at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But over time, then, once, a lot, once some people have left the market, then they are kind of cooperating, coordinating, and say, okay, let's not sell anymore, and then everybody's going to win. And that's what happened. Now, the interesting part about is that this is being created by the fear condition, by those who are scared. Here is the average of both those who had watched the documentaries and those who had watched the fearful one. But the fearful guys are much more here, and the documentary guys are much more here. When do you cash out? Okay. And here are the scared guys. You see them, they cashing out. They leave in the game very early, and only a few people in the neutral condition leaving it. Now it reverses again. So this is exactly how fear pushes the market down. The, the implication is, is how you can try to control for that initial emotional reaction. And actually in our studies you observe this. Those who make more money were those who decided to stay in the game. That they were not influenced by their, by their feelings. If I believe that I may get mugged, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to reduce the this this source of uncertainty by not walking at night when I go back home. Okay, I'm going to drive. Now, if I, now, the same example applies to the stock market. If I believe that the stock market can, can go down, or if I 
anxious or uh, fearful because the stock market can uh, has gone down and may may uh, may even may drop even further. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to sell that stock and eliminate that uncertainty. So although these examples they come from completely different contexts, the rationale is always the same. You have a source of uncertainty. That source of uncertainty makes you uncomfortable. And what's the best way of reducing this in the stock market is by selling the stock. What we are proposing here is that sometimes if you have the ability to endure that source of uncertainty for a little longer, or if you, or if you can try to avoid this, this source of uncertainty that keep bothering you by not reading the newspapers, that can be a good strategy to, to then have a more long-term view of, of, of your investment. Mm -hmm.